I want to go over a review once more before we move on, and I actually want to recommend that you pause the video and write this down so you have it in front of you while we go over the rest of our discussion. So what have we determined so far? We don't want a reference to desire or preferred outcomes in our rule. The only thing good in itself is a good will. The will can be responding to duty or to inclination. And the good will is one that responds to duty. Great, you are ready to make du duty the decisive factor in your actions. So what the hell is your duty? Well, we've eliminated the possibility of looking to what we like or don't like about people's behavior or what we don't like or like about societies or what we think a good outcome would look like to figure out what our duty is. So what do we have left? What Kant wants to do is to look closely at what duty is as a concept. He's going to make this move again and again. Just examine what the very concept itself means. What ideas are we communicating when we say duty? And then we're going to see if we can pull any information out of the concept itself. Again, this goes back to the need to get away from our emotional learned responses to things so that we don't actually accidentally build social biases into a rule and then go around thinking we've come up with an actual ethical principle. So what is the concept of duty? Let's unravel it all. First, we know that duties are created by codes, rules, or laws of some sort. For instance, Codes of behavior, most of them unspoken and unwritten, create your duties as a parent. The bylaws of a club lay down duties for its officers. City and state laws establish the duties of citizens. Traffic laws create your duties as a driver. So if we do something because it's our civic duty or our duty as a parent or our duty as a good friend, our motivation is respect for the code that makes that behavior our duty. Thinking we're duty bound is simply respecting certain codes, rules, or laws that pertain to us. Most of the time we do stuff that we consider our duty, not because someone's making us, but just because we respect that rule. And following the rule is how we show that we respect it. For example, we talked before about how we sometimes have to do tedious, annoying stuff for our friends, like give them a ride when it's really not convenient, or sit and listen to them talk for hours about their parents or their boyfriend or their dogs. Why do we do it? Because we want to be a good friend. There's an unspoken set of rules that says you show up and listen when your friend needs to talk, and we demonstrate that we respect that rule by showing up and listening. We do all kinds of boring, unpleasant stuff for our kids or our parents because we feel like we have parental duties or filial duties. And most of the time, what we're doing isn't something that anyone is making us do. In fact, a lot of it would be almost impossible to make anyone do. We're taking up that burden ourselves because we have respect for the often unwritten or unspoken code that says you should do this as a good kid, as a good parent, as a good friend as a good citizen. Okay, so we know that duty is a code, rule, or law. But that can't be all of what we mean by moral duty. First of all, some codes, rules, and laws are reprehensible, like Jim Crow laws after Reconstruction in the US, or the Nuremberg laws in Germany. Respect for those laws is hardly showing moral worth. Furthermore, our respect for any particular law isn't and shouldn't be unconditional. We respect them to the extent that they don't violate other principles that we hold more dear. If you had to, for some odd reason, break into someone's house in order to save their life, then you should violate the rule against breaking and entering, because in that instance, that rule is standing in the way of another 
more important principle to protect people's lives where you can. Also, we are looking for the most fundamental ethical principle. That would be a rule that we use to judge whether we ought to follow any particular law, or whether we ought to fight to repeal it, or whether it should generally be a rule but we should ignore it in this particular case because there's a more important rule that overrides it. How do we know whether our particular rules are good or bad or generally good but we should overrule them in this instance? We're trying to find the most foundational rule, and we take all our individual rules and hold them up against the foundational rule to see if they were good or not. So it can't be any particular rule that provides the foundation for our duty. But then what's left? If we're looking for a law, but it can't be any particular law, then we seem to be stuck. Now, don't worry, obviously Kant has got this, but the next part is really, really tricky to follow, so I'm giving it its own video. Before you move on, be sure that you've carefully reviewed this video, gotten all your notes in order, go take a quick break, stretch, move around a little bit, get the blood moving to your brain, and I will meet you in the next video.